This is the Easter season when we celebrate Jesus' resurrection on Easter Sunday. So I thought we could look at some plants that have the word resurrection in their name. This fern is commonly called the resurrection fern. This plant is commonly called the resurrection plant. And there's a lily sometimes called the resurrection lily. I'm going to take them in reverse order. The lily is also called the surprise lily, magic lily, and naked lady lily, and other names. You may not want to have naked lady in your search history, so botanists call it Lycoris squamagera. It's in the amaryllis family. It has leaves in the spring that look like daffodil leaves. The leaves die after a couple months, and then in August, pink flower stalks shoot up out of the ground with clusters of pink flowers. This is the resurrection plant, Selaginella lepidophylla. It's also called Rose of Jericho, Dinosaur Plant, and other names. It looks like a fern, but it's not. It's a spike moss from the Chihuahuan Desert of the United States and Mexico. During the rainy season, it looks like this. And during the dry season, it looks like this. It's often sold as a novelty, like a toy. Put it in water, and in a few hours, it uncurls and might turn green. Take it out of the water, and in a few hours, it curls up and turns brown. Each time it is watered and it grows, it needs to stay watered and green for a few weeks before watering is stopped and it curls up and turns brown. Each cycle of wet and dry consumes energy and nutrients. If the plant dries out too soon, it won't photosynthesize long enough to make more sugar, and it will eventually die. If treated properly, it can lose up to 95% of its moisture, and it can survive in the dry state for a couple of years. The dry form is very brittle, so be careful handling the plant. Since it will open and close even when it's dead, like a dry sponge expanding when it gets wet, the plant you buy may already be dead. Advertising for this plant may describe it as blooming when it opens. It's not. It's a moss, so it doesn't have flowers. Some advertisements describe the plant as being two inches across and calling it a jumbo. You really want to get one that is advertised as being at least four inches across when dry. I bought these two from St. Tara on Amazon. This leaves us with the resurrection fern, which is native from Maryland, west to the southern tip of Illinois, and then south to Central and South America, the Caribbean, and even to Africa. For many years, and in virtually every advertisement for this plant, you'll see the botanical name of Pleopeltis polypodioides. However, botanists have decided to split this into seven different species. The polypodioides species is now confined to Central and South America. The resurrection fern of Southeast USA, Mexico, and Guatemala is Pleopeltis michoiana. This fern is an evergreen epiphyte. It grows on tree trunks, branches, fallen logs, and an occasional rock. Epiphytes grow on other plants without taking nutrients from the host and without harming them. During dry spells, the fronds of this fern curl up and are brittle, so be careful when you handle them. Unlike the resurrection plant that grows in the desert, these ferns grow in the rainier and more humid climate. They usually don't have very long dry spells, but they can stay dormant for months at a time if necessary. They attach to the host plant through rhizomes that spread and often form a mat on the surface of the branches. The roots are mostly for attachment and they don't absorb much water. Just like the resurrection plant, the resurrection ferns will die if repeatedly forced into wet and dry cycles without enough time for the fern to photosynthesize and replace the sugars and nutrients necessary for survival. All three of these resurrection plants are available from many sources, and I'm sure you can find one suitable for you. I think you'll have fun growing them, and I think you should give them a try. I got the resurrection ferns and Spanish moss from Forest Flora on Etsy. Thinking of Jesus' resurrection, if I say, He is risen, you say, He is risen indeed.